Today, I bring you a body count so high it's impossible to estimate and a killer so deranged he thought God told him to attack people he had never even met before. The Killings of Tony Blair from 2016, written and produced by George Galloway and directed by... Oh, fuck. And, uh, it all sounds so, sounded so credible as well. Putri Gawatri Pertwee. Ah, oh, shit. The once hugely successful politician who arguably transformed the Labour Party and arrived at number 10 on a wave of popular support and optimism now lingers at the edge of British politics as the Chilcot Inquiry is released on the defining act of his premiership, the decision behind the implementation of and aftermath of Britain's participation in the invasion of Iraq in 2003. This documentary explains the here, then and now of one Tony Blair. Combining testimony from prominent observers, ambassadors and statesmen with extensive archive footage, animation and illustrations from the award-winning political cartoonist Steve Bell, George Galloway sets out his argument that, despite the good things that his government achieved, Tony Blair's actions since leaving office reveal that his overriding motivation may have always been a messianic pursuit of personal glory and financial reward. Strap yourself in, this is going to be a long one. Starting with where Blair was in 2016, in which his business model draws obvious comparisons with the Clinton Foundation with his Tony Blair Associates company, the killings of Tony Blair establishes itself as not an unofficial biography of Tony Blair, but more interestingly, an account of the numerous scandals he has been involved with in his professional and even personal life, as well as dipping occasionally into psychological profiling which your mileage may vary on whether that is significant or not to the matter at hand. Was it the troubles in Ireland, John Major having the magnetism of a wooden plank, or was it the triangulation effect perfected by the Clintons, which meant cross-partisan appeal through centrist policies? I'm going to leave that to you, but New Labour's unparalleled election majority, considering the numerous gerrymandering practices the previous Conservative government had conducted in the decade or so previous, I would hope speaks for itself. Well, that and promising to dismantle antitrust policies for Rupert Murdoch, but it's a hard film to hate on as the message is so unilaterally appealing. Even before he became Prime Minister, Tony Blair was making deals with bank and media tycoons to secure his victory, and it really only got worse from there. Pioneering a revolving door system of corruption, which was like Thatcherism on steroids, Tony Blair's contemporary role as an influence agent for dictators Offering spin advice comes from years of experience of near sociopathic degrees of manipulation. He dragged his party's name through the mud and was a co-conspirator in possibly millions of deaths in wars he instigated and propagated in the name of throughout the world. The documentary does lay out the positive effects of New Labour, um, such as of course the obvious the Good Friday Agreement, which was a milestone in ending the sectarian violence in Ireland for now. Uh, they also introduced a national minimum wage, which has morphed into something Britons know now as universal credit. Also, additional spending on benefits and tax credits meant that child poverty was significantly decreased, even though these were surface-level reforms and didn't get to the root of the problem, such as the proud British tradition of social inequality, as well as the elephant in the room, corruption within the financial sector, which would eventually come back to bite them in the arse. This legacy of weak technocratic policies made for plentiful ammunition for David Cameron's election campaign. I would go into the private finance initiative, but I just ate. The only thing I can really say bad about the killings of Tony Blair is that as a piece of filmmaking it looks very cheap, which sounds contradictory I know, but it was distracting. Whether it was terrible watered down covers of pop songs they couldn't get the licensing for, or the basic looking animations, or the poor quality stock footage that could have done with a bit of remastering in some way, it's not a very good look. If you felt you needed all this flash to make the very obvious point, shared on many sides of the political spectrum, that Tony Blair is a corrupt piece of shit, then I don't know what to say about that. Maybe you thought people wouldn't take you seriously? Were your Kickstarters going to be pissed off if you didn't feature all this chintzy bollocks? I'm sorry, but the try-hard aesthetic of this documentary to be something like an Errol Morris piece or Man on Wire severely undermines its message and is even a Blair-like move in of itself. However, 
The interviews, the meat of the documentary, are still exceptionally strong and paint a very damning portrait of the legacy of Blair and New Labour, I must emphasise. In conclusion, The Killings of Tony Blair is a nauseating and depressing examination of the most infamous scandals of Tony Blair's career, one which caused insurmountable damage to the credibility of the Labour Party and more importantly played a key role in several events from several different time periods that has left the Middle East in a state of fear and political fragmentation that is much further away from obtaining a resolution than it was before 2003. If you would like to get a better idea of how British politics has gotten to the state that it is today, then I highly recommend The Killings of Tony Blair as it lays out a shameful legacy of corruption that many of us are still reeling from today due to it directly cultivating the alienation and apathy millions in this country feel towards Britain's political scene. That we found uh, people in my containers in my constituency. I'm really sorry to say it's all too regular an occurrence and it was only a matter of time before and on that note, we are done. With the marathon, that is. Come back tomorrow for the five worst films I reviewed for Sashafon 2019. Goodbye and watch out.